A distance versus time graph gives us information about where an object is at any given time. This information can be useful in its own right, but it can also be used to calculate the speed of an object. When, for example, sprinters are training for their big race, they don't just record their times over the full 100 metres as is done in the race, they collect information about every stage of the sprint so that they can try to fix up any weaknesses. I can run 100 metres in about 15 seconds, so I'm clearly not much of a sprinter. But these are the times that were recorded at the 5 metre mark, the 10 metre mark and so on, up to the 100 metre mark. When you look at a table like this one, the amount of information can be overwhelming. However, we can use a distance versus time graph to get a simple picture of what happened during the sprint. A distance versus time graph shows distance on the y-axis, in this case in metres, and time on the x-axis, in this case in seconds. The first 5 metres took 1.49 seconds to complete, so we can put a dot at that point. I crossed the 10 metre mark after 2.36 seconds, so the next dot goes here. Repeating the procedure gives us a series of dots. We can then join the dots with what's called a line of best fit, which here takes the shape of a smooth curve. We can now get information from the graph. For example, how much distance did I cover in one second? Let me zoom in a bit first. Reading off the graph, we can see that the answer is about 3 metres. After 2 seconds? After 2 seconds, I had covered about 8 metres. And after 3 seconds, I had covered about 14.2 metres. So, in the first second of the sprint, between the gun going off and the 1 second mark, I travelled 3 metres. But in the second second, that is between the 1 second mark and the 2 second mark, I travelled 8 minus 3 metres, which is 5 metres. In the third second, that is between the 2 second mark and the 3 second mark, I travelled 14.2 minus 8 metres, which is 6.2 metres. So each second, I was covering more and more distance. And why is that? It's because I was getting faster and faster. And by definition, a faster speed means that you cover more distance per second. My acceleration phase lasted about 5 or 6 seconds, after which I maintained a more or less constant speed for a few seconds. Towards the end, I was slowing down. The orange line here is Jamaican athlete Usain Bolt's distance versus time graph for his 2008 then world record 100m sprint, which he completed in just 9.69 seconds. His graph is clearly much steeper than mine, since he covered the same distance in much less time. Now we normally refer to the steepness of a graph as its gradient, and in fact, the gradient of a distance versus time graph gives a measure of an object's speed. Let's look at a simple example. Thanks for watching this short excerpt from Shedding Light on Motion Episode 4, Graphing Motion. In this episode of the Shedding Light on Motion series, we look at how graphs are used to analyse an object's motion. We first look at distance versus time graphs and displacement versus time graphs. And then move on to velocity versus time graphs. We finish by examining acceleration versus time graphs. So, in a 100 metre sprint, when do athletes reach their highest speed? When do they accelerate at the highest rate? And at what point, if any, do they stop accelerating? These questions and many more are answered in this outstanding program. The student worksheets and practical activities that accompany the Shedding Light on Motion series can be downloaded for free from our website at www.liakoseducationalmedia.com. Thanks again for watching.